Welcome to Catalytic Leadership, the podcast designed to help leaders intentionally grow and thrive. Here is your host, author and leadership and executive coach, Dr. William Attaway. Hey, it's William, and welcome to today's episode of the Catalytic Leadership Podcast. Each week, we tackle a topic related to the field of leadership. My goal is to ensure that you have actionable steps you can take from each episode to grow in your own leadership. Growth doesn't just happen. My goal is to help you become intentional about it. Each week, we spotlight leaders from a variety of fields, organizations, and locations. And my goal is for you to see that leaders can be catalytic no matter where they are or what they lead. I draw inspiration from the stories and journeys of these leaders, and I hear from many of you that you do too. Let's jump in to today's interview. I'm so excited today to have Emmanuel Rose on the podcast. Emmanuel is a renowned expert in his field. He specializes in branding, advertising, and day-to-day operations at his digital agency, Strategic E-Marketing. He has spent over three decades earning a reputation in cutting-edge marketing. His passion lies in helping companies achieve business success from the bottom to the top. Emmanuel's unique approach to marketing strategies has resulted in countless clients reaching their goals. He enjoys learning his craft and implementing new techniques and theories for his clients, not only in his home state of Oregon, but around the world. Together with his hand-selected staff, Emmanuel creates opportunities while solving challenges in the ever-changing digital landscape. He is a firm believer in using his personal experiences to help others. Emmanuel, I'm so glad you're here. Thanks for being on the show. Thanks for having me, William. I'm looking forward to our conversation. Me too. I would love for you to share some of your story with our listeners, Emmanuel, particularly around your journey and your development as a leader. How did you get started? Well, I started out as one of those crazy four-year-old kids who wanted to get a boomerang, but had to sell seeds door to door to get the money. To buy the boomerang. Nice. I love it. (laughs) Entrepreneur at four. (laughs) You know, the parents walk me around and put the little thing up to the lady and she orders two pumpkin packs and, you know, that that sort of thing. So, um, so, you know, that's just how I think I was wired. Um, And I I love sales and marketing. I've done it my, obviously my whole life. Uh, I started my first mail order company when I was like 18 Wow. Uh, did uh it was back in the early days of the rebound of hemp, right? The yeah. fabric and and twine and all those things. And so um I had a company, I I would uh, make hemp bracelets, I'd take them to festivals and sell bracelets, and then just start being more and more uh products. And so I sold that mail order. And nice. I just, I loved going to the mailbox and having orders there, right? Like, uh, <laughs> yes, <laughs> like getting the email from your website now. It says, Hey, you have an order. That's that, right. Well, it was, I have to go to the PO box to do that. In those days. <laughs> yeah. And then, uh, you know, over the years, I, I worked for a few companies uh, as product manager and, and, and which is a really a good sales and marketing uh, combo role. And I just, I got, uh, I had a big bonus that uh, I got reneged on after uh-huh. I did my part. Uh-huh. Uh, and then the the role I had right after that, um, I was brought in to be a change agent and they told me not to do anything for 90 days. And then after 90 days, they fired me. And, um, what? <laughs> <laughs> and so, you know, I was sitting, sitting with myself and counseling myself, I'm like, this isn't going to work. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And uh, so it's about 14 years ago. And that's when, you know, social media was just really starting to take off as an obvious uh, track and path of advertising in marketing. And um, and so I, I got one chapter ahead of a couple of companies and uh, and got a few clients, uh, some of which I still have. After wow. This entire time, which my yeah, goodness. Those guys, they're patient, patient companies. <laughs> but now it's kind of flipped where I'm I'm one chapter ahead again. <laughs> I love it. As long as you stay one chapter ahead, that's all you need, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know, that speaks volumes, Emmanuel. I mean, for for somebody to retain a client in the digital marketing landscape for 14 years, that's pretty unusual. 
what yeah. would you say? What how would you say you've done? Well, I I think you know uh, the and we we as as leaders as entrepreneurs as business managers we're always looking to kind of balance that. How much do I give? To my clients and where am i in a negative margin situation and how much yeah. is my time worth yeah. and um and i'm pretty much i just i never say no and, and i'm like that with all my clients i never say no and i i want what they want as much as they want it right like nice and and some some people understand that and can can connect with that and some people have a hard time understanding that and uh and get 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 lost from that uh, conversation, but that's what I breed in myself. That's what I breed in my team. And uh, we just pretty much never say no. Sometimes we say yes. And, you know, and I need to bill you or, <laughs> or yes. And I'll take it on and we'll make that our expense. But uh, it's really, it's, it's a form of love, I think, right. Where you care about somebody else and their concerns as much as you care about yourself. You've been you've been in this business long enough that I bet you can see trend lines like over over a long distance. You know, people who are brand new to the field, they they haven't been in it long enough to see that. But yep. with, with your experience and track record, what trend lines are you seeing right now that you think businesses need to be aware of? Well, I, the first one, and I'm I'm shocked that this has become an issue again, but. Uh, we're back in this interruption marketing space with pop-ups. Yeah, yeah. Uh, especially this time of the year, it's insane. <laughs> like, I I did a search for a turkey vest for my son-in-law, turkey hunting vest, and yeah, um, and I want to get him, you know, the nice one and all with all this all the stuff, right? Go to a website through Google search, and I don't just get one pop-up, which is asking me for my information to get a discount for putting in my email, but then I get a second pop-up on top of their first pop-up. Oh, man. <laughs> Persistent. At, <laughs> at that point, I just hit the X, and I went to next, right? Yep. Like, yep. This is not my job to give you my my information. Your job is to give me the product that I want and to do it in the quickest time possible. Yes. And there's lots of competition out there, and and you know you lose you lose money by being uh, what I call lazy marketer, mm -hmm. um, and and that's a programming issue that that company has, right? Like they didn't they didn't think through their funnel at all, and um, and the interruption marketing is one trend that I think we're going to see disappear because of that. Again, I hope, so. I hope you're right. <laughs> <laughs> pop up blocker. It's time for that old Yahoo right. pop up blocker. That's right. <laughs> Bring it out of mothballs. <laughs> yeah. Um, I think the other thing that I've seen is that, um, and again, it's in the lazy marketer category, which is this uh, uh, spray and pray mentality that the yes. marketing agencies and, and businesses are having. Yeah. You know, you're, you're getting emails and text messages that got the wrong name in it, that got uh, a blank where the name goes. So you know it immediately that it's nothing you ever signed up for, and it's uh, not anything that you're interested in at this time. So um, I think the 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 this I and this is where AI can help us with the hyper personalization if you take the time to craft it properly. But we have to come from a philosophy of hyper personalization. And that, um, for instance, you know, I just got a, I got a new client that does IT services. I, he's really concerned about his sales process. So I bought him uh, one of my favorite books by Anthony Honorino, who's a B2B sales genius. Um, I got him some notepads with his name and his company logo on them. And that's my thank you and welcome gift is uh, oh, nice. very personalized stuff. Not anything about me. It's all about him. So that hyper personalization is is one of the trends that we need to pay attention to in order to um, stand out as as small business because we can't compete on the on the spray and pray. That's good. So I have to ask, being a book lover as I am, what's the name of the book that you got? <laughs> Let's see this one, Anthony, and Anthony's a prolific writer. He's uh, this one is Elite Sales Strategy. And, uh, and the, the simple part of it from his perspective is to do exactly what you're saying, which is what's, what are the trends that are coming up? Mm 
Yeah. And and then how do you present um, options to to capture capture those trends for your clients? And and how do you you build that custom plan uh, based on what their objectives are? That's that's really that's really insightful. And I think I think anybody who's in the space, whether they're in in marketing agency world or just an entrepreneur starting their own business, if they're not aware of those type of trend lines. If they're not a student of the space, a perpetual student of the space, it's so easy to fall behind at the pace at which things are moving. Has that been your experience? Absolutely. And I think uh, I call it the engineer effect, right? Like we engineer this product or service, uh, you know, me as an agency owner, you know, I've got these things I like to sell, right? Yeah. That are high margin. We can crank them out. It's easy peasy. But if the client doesn't need it, I, I'm not trying to fit them into that product. I'm trying to fit my product into what they need, right? So and, good. And that, so that over engineer is is one of the challenges that we fall into, and that we get out of date because of that philosophy. Mm. You know, I, I just I would love to unpack that just for a minute because I think that's so good not taking your favorite product and making it fit everybody, no matter whether they need it or not. <laughs> that That's a trap. And that is a trap I see a lot of people falling into. How yeah. do you avoid that? How are you intentional about avoiding that trap? It is, for me, it's about listening to, to what, listening and summarizing in that Carl Rogers uh, process of, you know, saying, so what I'm hearing you say is yeah. ABC, is that accurate? They say, yeah. And then, well, if you prioritize that, what's the list of priorities? Where do you think eighty percent more income could come from? You know, yeah. whatever, whatever those questions are based on what their uh, their outcomes are. Um, that's what I'm digging into. And so, for the instance, this IT company, I I heard four things. I uh, I helped him prioritize the list because he wasn't sure, um, and the CEO. And so. Uh, then that's the scope of work. And then as we got deeper into the contract, he's like, well, I think these three things are really the things that are the issue. And the fourth <laughs> thing we can deal with later, like, okay, cool. Perfect. Yeah. yeah. And so, um, so that's, that's my goal is to listen, reflect, and then build the program for them. And I'm going to be able to do some of my favorite things that are high margin, easy peasy, but it, under, under the, um, the sconce of his needs, yes. not my needs. Yeah. So well said. I think spinning that around and looking at their needs first. And that, that's what I'm hearing, that intentionality of asking the right questions. Because you're never going to get the right answers unless you ask the right questions. And then listen. And yeah. leveraging active listening. So what I'm hearing you say, that's so, so, so spot on. So th these are trends that we've, we've talked about, like trends from the past going forward into the present. What do you see out there? What do you see in the future? Like, is there is there stuff that you see on the horizon for for marketers that, man, it, it's it's starting to emerge. I mean, AI, of course, is all the rage. Everybody's yeah. talking AI, but what what do you see given your track? I think there's a there's a un, we're we're going to reach an uncomfortable spot here where um, with the AI in particular, right? Because uh, right now, good use of AI requires us as marketers to think like a programmer, yeah. and um, and I'll tell you, I'm not good at that. I'm a philosopher. I'm a big picture thinker. I can I can write uh, ten strategic plans in the next hour for ten different industries. Wow! Uh, but I can't write an AI prompt. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. To, Get Chat GPT to give you exactly what you want, right? <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, like that. Yeah. So yeah. so, but the it's getting sophisticated enough where we're going to be able to layer on, you know, keywords, persona. Uh, look at this uh, blog post written, look at these 10 LinkedIn posts from this executive where we can, we can build out, you know, a 25 layer prompt that then can generate not just a content calendar and, and uh, 90 days of email and 150 social posts and images and a product description. You know, I mean, it'll, and, and not to, not the too distant future, we're going to be able to get all that content and then Somebody's going to have to read that and and make sure it's on point and there's no hallucinations in it yeah. and that um, it's on brand and on on uh, influencer uh, brand. Um, but we still are going to have to have some amount of philosophy and creativity, right? That so so we're going to end up with these marketing engineers 
who can speak that and then we're gonna we're still gonna need the marketing philosophers like the space that i i inhabit um but there's gonna be less need for less of me <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> which is not the worst thing right because then it frees you up to do the things that only you can do yeah it'll free me up to go spend more time outside meditating <laughs> which brings me to another question uh in, we had talked previously and you mentioned that you're finishing a book on solitude in nature now that is not something i would have expected somebody in the digital marketing world <laughs> to be writing i would love to hear more about that project yeah, so I'm a lifelong outdoorsman. I was lucky to get born into a family that uh, taught me to fly fish and hunt at a young age. And we were campers and, and uh, backpackers my whole life. And um, and so as I was working on my book about authentic marketing to Gen Z and uh, understanding how technology is impacting our brain and developing TikTok brain and lack of impulse control and all the the you know, the, the biochemical changes that are not positive. Um, I was, I thought about it and I was like, well, you know, so that means I need to work on this other book. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's the antidote for that because yeah. I don't want to just contribute to the problem and see the mm -hmm. problem. I want to do something about it. Love that. And, and then through my reflection, which my commitment to myself is that uh, a week, a, a month, I spend outside disconnected and, um, and that's because that's what it takes to enjoy the, my hobbies. Right. And, um, and I always, I wrap in, um, absolute solitude, disconnected, uh, time. And then, you know, come to find out the, all the challenges that are listed biochemically are, are neutralized by, by the activity that I'm doing. So there's kind of a natural balance, which is probably why I've been able to do this for as long as I have. Right. And, and not have to, uh, put a pin in it and do something different. Um, in terms of being connected to digital marketing. Um, so so the, anyway, that's the genesis of it. And um, and uh, what I outline in the book is, you know, there's there's it's a simple seven step process um, that is about planning and about um, picking a spot where you're safe and, and having people look at you if they need to from a distance and um, and spending time either listening to good content that are, are podcasts are going to encourage you to think about what it is to be a human spend time praying meditating whatever your your uh, religious philosophy is and then um, build a list of activities you're going to do once you get back and then stay in touch with it through that that um, that special time in the morning to pray or meditate every day and and that's what uh, it keeps me full. It keeps me energetic and keeps me able to do uh, what I do. And the science backs it up that those, those activities are important for high performers. You know, I, I talk to so many people who are struggling because they are, they are all caught up in the hustle and grind culture. And in the digital marketing world, I think that is just normal, you know, just run harder, run faster, deliver more. Right. And then rinse and repeat. <laughs> And, and what you're describing is very countercultural to that because you're making sure that you get what you need. You're making sure your cup is full before you try to pour it out for somebody else. You're not trying to serve your clients with the leftovers. You're making sure you're in a healthy spot so you can serve them at the highest capacity level. Yeah. And to stay in touch with uh, <clears throat> who am I and why am I here? Right. Yeah. And it's not just to be, um, not just to be a, an earn a earning unit uh, in the yeah. in the economy, right? There's there's a lot more about being a human being, and like you're saying, I'm able to provide much better uh, services to my clients and and to my team as a as the leader, yeah. uh, if I'm in a, in a space of of being grounded and centered and understanding what our objectives are. <laughs> and I imagine if I were to talk to your team members, they would be thrilled that you do that. <laughs> because it, it makes you a healthy leader. You're leading them from a healthy place, from a balanced yeah. place. Yeah, exactly. And able to able to see uh, see the big picture. And when there are the scrapes and and tussles, either internally or with the clients, that you know I can I can be the ground one to bring us back to. Okay, well, what what is our purpose here? And uh, do we cut this client loose because 
they're too complicated psychologically or is it on our side and do we figure yeah. some things out and uh and not get into the uh the the struggle and the survival mentality that's so good i can't wait to read your book when, when is it supposed <laughs> to come out well, I'm in the final edits right now, so I would think sometime in December I'll probably nice. be able to get uh, get some advanced copies out. Yeah, I look forward to that. I oh, think that's going to be an outstanding addition to the bookshelf of every leader who's listening. No, thank because you. Because I I find that that I really don't encounter a whole lot of people who lead from a place of calm control, who lead from a place of balance. Mm -hmm. Too many people are trying to to run at a pace that is unhealthy and unsustainable. And I think your book is going to be on the solution side to that problem. Yeah. And that is the challenge, right? We do. I mean, there's a balance between working hard enough and long enough hours to, to, to get a new product or service over, over that, <clears throat> that hump. Right. Yeah. Uh, so we know we have to go through these periods of, of hard work, but we also have to have um, these little periods of celebration or re relax and so a lot of times we do that with our group or a team or a family and th and that's cool but then we got to have time for ourselves um otherwise like you're talking about we end up and you, you get that uh you know 20 years later i bounce between six jobs and i've been running as hard as i can and nothing worked and uh, i'm not happy and my wife's not happy my kids don't want to talk to me and that's no way to live we know that yeah but too many people that's what they think is is what it takes yeah to win Right. And I put win in quotes because that's not winning. You and I both, I think, would agree on that. Uh, let me let me ask you, Manuel, like, you know, you're a different leader today than you were five years ago. For sure. And your business is going to need you to lead at a better and higher level a year, five years from now than where you are today. What are you, what do you do to intentionally level up? How do you make sure you're going to be the leader you need to be a year, five years from now? Well, absolutely, I'm paying attention to the trends, right? That's mm -hmm. the and and so AI, obviously, in marketing space is is, uh, and I don't even know what's going on with AI in other spaces because yeah. it's so all encompassing in this well, space, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, so the paying attention to the trends and understanding. Um, understanding how we're going to have to morph and change and um and be what it is to be an agency in a year and and how do i see that transpiring and how do i find those clients right because i'm still the primary uh salesperson for my agency mm -hmm. um so so that's that's one thing the other thing is that i get coaching i get help mm -hmm. um and i'm very committed i'm, I'm committed lifelong learner um if I, i'm i'm reading I'm watching, I'm listening to podcasts um, and books and, and then have a, have a coach. Uh, you, yeah. you, you know, this, if you look at a professional golfer or a professional football yeah. player, you know, people at the highest levels of their art, they are, they are, they have a team of seven or eight coaches, you know? <laughs> yeah, they do. So the continuing learning and coaching uh, and then trying things out and seeing what works and what doesn't work and what, where do I, where can I implement things and where can I not implement things? And I have to get help doing it because I'm inadequate in that space. And I'm okay with that. I know who I am. I'm a philosopher. I, I'm a big picture guy. I'm never going to do my own accounting because of that. <laughs> I love that. I think that is maturity because uh, so many people, so many business owners think they have to be great at everything. And think that, well, you know, if it's part of running a business, then I've got to do it. I've got to be the. No, you have a zone of genius. <laughs> you have things that mm -hmm. you're great at. You need to discover what that is and make sure you're spending as much of your time as possible in that zone and then get other people to help you with the other things. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. I think it was Jim Rohn who talked about that, um, who was always like, you know, make that list of all the things that you do and what are you good at? <laughs> And yeah. get better at the things you're good at because that's going to be easy. <laughs> yes, yes, exactly. It'll also be more fun. Yeah. <laughs> right? Right. <laughs> if, you, if we put you in an accounting hat and say, you know, you got to do that for eight hours a day, uh, it's not going to be long before you're going to be a little tired of that. Yeah, no, I couldn't. I couldn't even last a day. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. So, so looking ahead for your business, like, like, if you look out a year, you look out 12, 24 months, like 
what is one thing you really want to see happen in your business? Well, I really want to pull together a suite of AI tools and and a process to use them and get those uh, embedded with my clients, <clears throat> right? Because yeah. that will that will allow allow um, us, my team, to get rid of that and jettison that um, kind of routine work and. Yeah. They're going to want to do that anyway, bring some of these things in house. Right. And that's great. That's the natural flow. Yeah. Uh, and then for us to keep being out there nibbling at the edges uh, to to bring in and understand where AI is inadequate and where the space that we inhabit in the new world of, of AI. And it might be that we're uh, more of a lead gen or, or relationship organization is what marketing will turn into, right? Where we're humanizing and authenticating this AI content versus generating all the content. So you become more of a strategy partner. Yeah. Yeah. And then, yeah. Uh, and then yeah. linking people, you know? Yes. That, that relationship linking and that, that partnering around strategy. These are things I have not seen AI have the capacity to do, but right. that is something that people are fantastic at. Hey, you know what? You're, you're looking at this. You know, I know, I know somebody, I know somebody I think you should talk to. Yeah. And we begin to, to to foment those connections. That is something I think that can really be valuable in the right space, in the right time, at the right moment. That's something yeah, I that agree. I think you could really be great at. Yeah, I agree. And it is back to this idea of um, how I'm committed to my community and I'm committed, committed to the things that I'm interested in, right? Yeah. And Ducks Unlimited and uh, Camp Jack Hazard, where I I was a staff person and still wow. taking kids on on backpacking trips and you know so uh, I have these fears that I'm committed to and yeah. AI will be able to tell a story about what those things are in a one dimensional or even a two dimensional way, but it will never be able to do what you're saying right, which is hey you know I know the CEO of Patagonia I'm going to lift the phone up and call him and say you know what do you think about this idea right yes. that's that's not um at least as we understand it that's not um, a possibility yet <laughs> absolutely and it, it leans into that whole philosophy side of things right the why why do you take kids at this place why do you take them out backpacking right because of the difference that's made in your life yeah right it's such a big part of who you are and when something's that big of a part of us we want to share it absolutely and uh, yeah, and if it create it creates a health issue, then uh, that's a whole nother reason, right? It, that's the the bigger the bigger picture for me is that um, to see the negative side of it and the lack of impulse control and the lack of connection and the fear missing out, all these these really dark parts of the human psyche. Uh, we it's our job as people who see that to to do something to neutralize that because it's. Mm -hmm. It's gonna. It's not gonna just hurt us. It's gonna hurt our families in the future. So good, thinking not just about ourselves, but about the ones yet to come. I think that's that is a higher level of leadership. If you could go back and talk to yourself at the beginning of your journey, you can go back and talk to yourself decades ago when you were just getting started, knowing what you know now. What would you love to go back and tell yourself? Yeah, I think it it does tie into what we just had, which is this idea that the relationships are really what are the most important thing and to hold on to my my networks with more care. <clears throat> and, you know, the in the industries that I'm not a part of anymore, I still could use those networks and I could still be a value, valuable help to those people. Um, and that I was kind of, I was in a rush. I, you know, I wanted wanted to get the next big product out. I wanted to get the next big sale. I wanted to grow the company and every project, you know, the push, push, push. Yeah. But, um, you know, and 30 years later, I would much rather have the relationships with those people because the products have been changing every, every time. Right. Um, yeah. That's, you know, that's, that, that's interesting because I think that plays into what you do now and the relationships you've built. I keep going back to, you know, you've still got some of the same clients you had 14 years ago. That's just so uncommon. But I think that's that's the natural outgrowth of that learning you just described. Yeah. How important relationships are. Yeah, that's interesting. And it, it reminds me of uh, in Gandhi's autobiography, he's like, he says, uh, you know, the 
a, a man's highest order is to find one woman and to love her and to love her as the verb is is my my interpretation of it right yeah and yeah. and that um, there cannot ever be world peace until there's peace within one man and then he yes. can work for world peace and those two things are are related in that in the commitment to uh, a focus on yourself in a, a functional way and and then linking that back to what we were talking about with the loving the clients um, in that same way. There's a there's a reason I believe that that I use this analogy all the time. When you get on an airplane, you know they tell you, you know, when the, if the oxygen mask drops, make sure you put it on yourself first, <laughs> right? Right. Yeah. Then assist the people with you. And and I think that is so true in so many spheres of our life. Yeah. You cannot lead in a healthy way if you are not leading yourself in a healthy way and you are the hardest person you will ever lead. That's true. The challenge that we have in this culture is that we think that our opinions and our likes are about us, right? Like, because I want my Starbucks a certain way, or uh, I don't like tomatoes. That, that's not, that's not knowing yourself. Right. That, that, those are just opinions about very, uh, very light topics. What, knowing yourself is about <laughs> what you're afraid of and yeah. what you're what you're really hoping to accomplish and what you really yes. want to see happen in the world and being afraid of those things and but still working to push push forward on those things and yes. and so that delineation i think is where people get they get captured they think oh i i really want to have this new lexus and that's what i'm about well no that's not what you're about that's the little ego that's that's looking for some some validation but yeah. What is, what is it that you're here to do and are you doing it? <laughs> yeah, exactly. The why, the real driving why. Yeah. That's what it sounds like, you know. And I think that's why you come across in, in, in both of our conversations so far, you come across as one who, who is leading from a place of calm control, a place of balance and center. And that is, that is very uncommon, Emmanuel. Well, I appreciate uncommon. that. Yeah, no. And I, I tell you, it's uh, it's simple, but it's not easy, right? It's yes. it's simple in that every day I get up and I I meditate and I pray, yeah. And I and every month I get outside and I meditate and I pray. So it's yeah. simple, yeah. but it's not easy because I have to schedule it, I have to protect it, I have to pay for it, and I have to do it. It's not it's just not in my head. I have to actually go and do it. Yes, <laughs> and the intentionality of what you just described is the model. And I hope everybody listening is grabbing onto that because I think that that is a model we can all learn from. You're a continual learner. And I ask every guest this, is there a book that has made a big difference in your journey? One that that you would recommend that every leader listening pick up and add to their to read list? I would say for me, it's uh, it's Sid Artha by Herman Hess. Hmm. And uh it's uh and it's it's a it's a german writer writing about uh hindu philosophy yeah and um talking about the human process and huh. that no matter what the 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 circus and the parade and the gesticulations that we make in our lives we're going to end up at the same place as everybody else mm -hmm. and and for me that uh gave me a sense of freedom mm -hmm. in that um, not having to make a right, the correct decision. Mm -hmm. Fascinating. I've not read this book. Now I've got to check it out. <laughs> All right. It, typically, Manuel, people will walk away from an episode like this with one big idea. If you could define for them what you want that one big idea to be, what would you say that to be? Uh, one big idea is to put the cell phone down for a minimum of two hours once a week. And mm -hmm. go for a walk next to a creek in the in the weather, and uh, take some time to yourself to to have an inferential walk, a meander in your mind, and as well as a physical physical uh, break. I know people are going to want to stay connected with you and continue to learn from you, Emmanuel. What is the best way for them to do that? I have a website that's emmanuelrose.com, and uh, that's got all the all the current uh, activities that I'm involved in. I love that. And we can find out more about your books there. Absolutely. And, and on Amazon also, however you want to do it. <laughs> Outstanding.
Thank you for the generosity that you've shown today in sharing so honestly and so openly from what you've learned so far. You bet. Well, I appreciate it. You're uh, you're very warm and engaging yourself. I appreciate that, William. Thanks for joining me for this episode today. As we wrap up, I'd love for you to do two things. First, subscribe to this podcast so you don't miss an episode. And if you find value here, I'd love it if you would rate it and review it. That really does make a difference in helping other people to discover this podcast. Second, if you don't have a copy of my newest book, Catalytic Leadership, I'd love to put a copy in your hands. If you go to catalyticleadershipbook.com, you can get a copy for free. Just pay the shipping so I can get it to you and we'll get one right out. My goal is to put this into the hands of as many leaders as possible. This book captures principles that I've learned in 20 plus years of coaching leaders in the entrepreneurial space, in business, government, nonprofits, education, and the local church. You can also connect with me on LinkedIn to keep up with what I'm currently learning and thinking about. And if you're ready to take a next step with a coach to help you intentionally grow and thrive as a leader, I'd be honored to help you. Just go to catalyticleadership.net to book a call with me. Stay tuned for our next episode next week. Until then, as always, leaders, choose to be catalytic. Thanks for listening to Catalytic Leadership with Dr. William Attaway. Be sure to subscribe wherever you listen to podcasts so you don't miss the next episode. Want more? Go to catalyticleadership.net.